Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Uh, this is the first video in AWS Zero to Hero for DevOps playlist. Um, all right, so let's start. So as you can see in the first slide, I want to talk about a time when we did not have cloud computing. So how things were working at that time. So let's look at that first. So before cloud era. Let us first understand uh, how servers were being built when cloud computing wasn't there. So I'm taking a, a basic scenario wherein suppose a company named ABC needs to deploy an application. Okay, so if this is the case, then the company would try to get in touch with one of the server vendors like Dell, uh, HP, IBM, etc. to procure the physical servers. Okay, I'm talking about physical servers here. Okay, and the company would also need physical storage to keep these servers. And also uh, this whole process from making a purchase order and until getting the delivery uh, used to take months. Okay, so it was a very long process to um, get the server uh, from the vendor. Okay, uh, transported to your place. Also, uh, they would order a server with more compute, more uh, RAM or random access memory and storage capacity in advance for future apps so that they again do not have to follow the procurement process. So you see, they would buy more compute, RAM and storage even though they won't use it at that time, at the time of buying it. Okay. So this implies that a lot of the resources that were purchased at that time for a cost were being wasted. Okay. So this is how things used to work at that time. But uh, so this is just a very high level uh, you know, uh, overview of the things that used to happen at that time. Of course, there were a lot of little details that I don't want to talk about in this video because we just want to focus on cloud computing. But I just wanted to give you a very high level overview of the things that were happening at that time and how cloud computing is able to resolve these problems. Okay, so you see here the process that were uh, that was being uh, followed at that time is, is more expensive since you are trying to buy more uh, you know uh, compute uh, RAM and, and storage capacity for your server because you don't want to raise the purchase order again and then again you have to wait for six months or so to get the server so the company used to buy the things in advance okay uh, I mean uh, even though they they won't be using it at that time, but they still have to buy the things in advance just to make it easier for them. Okay, so this whole process is, is very expensive. It is time consuming and of course it is less efficient. Okay, <clears throat> so then uh, at around 2006, AWS was introduced in the market. Okay, so how AWS, which stands for Amazon Web Services, resolve this problem? Okay, resolve this uh, problem of being less efficient and uh, you know uh, uh, spending more on the servers that are required to uh, to deploy the applications. So AWS uh, can be called the father of cloud computing as they started it. Okay, so they are the pioneers in cloud computing market right now also. They have the highest market share, okay, followed by Azure and GCP. And there are some other cloud providers as well, like DigitalOcean, and there are some others as well. But these three are the main ones. And uh, in these three, uh, AWS is the one that captures the highest market share at, at this time, okay. So AWS can be called the father of cloud computing as they started it somewhere around 2006, okay. Uh, so uh, companies who are trying to move to cloud for the first time, okay these days they still trust aws okay more than other other cloud providers just because they have spent more uh, uh, not more uh, uh, most hours are doing it okay so they so i mean what they do they build their own physical infrastructure across the globe okay and then they virtualize the uh, servers all right then they have built 
one website or portal called aws.amazon.com to rent these servers using the pay as you go payment model okay so in this case if you see aws has uh, built their entire infrastructure across the globe okay and then they have just i mean put it for rent okay using this this website okay uh, which is aws.amazon.com which we use to create our account on and then we can use their different services okay i mean here we are talking about servers but they do have other services as well uh, we will talk about it in a while so so they build their own uh, physical infrastructure and then they use virtualization and then these servers are available for rent using the the portal okay and they use pay as you go payment model now this is a very important question it can be asked in the interview okay what is the meaning of pay as you go payment model okay so pay as you go means that you need to pay for the resources only when you use it okay not in advance okay so uh, what happens in aws when you use some resources so you are uh, just built for uh, those resources only and then you get your uh, this monthly bill which you have to pay off okay so it, it is like renting the the services from aws okay so it is called pay as you go model pay as you go a payment model okay <clears throat> now what is public cloud so i mean once again there is i mean there are some important terms related to cloud computing that you should know okay so the first term is public cloud so the the physical servers are behind the scenes that are owned by aws okay so when you launch a server in aws you are using a virtual machine okay but behind the scenes there's a physical server working somewhere okay that you are not aware of and that server that physical server is owned by aws so you do not know where the physical server uh, for that virtual server resides so this is the concept of a public cloud it is called public cloud because it is like in the in the cloud form where you don't know where your data is okay so for this reason there are some security concerns as well about the concept of a public cloud and there are some some companies uh, which deals with sensitive data and they don't prefer to use uh, the public cloud but they uh, uh, but they use something called as private cloud okay just because of security reasons just because of the data that they have it is sensitive in nature they prefer to use the private cloud okay so that uh, they can have complete control over data security but this does not mean that in in public cloud computing uh, platforms like aws azure or, or gcp or digital ocean etc we do not have any security it just means that private clouds have additional layers of security since you control each and everything okay on the physical level so uh, but the 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 public clouds are easier to use with less uh, uh, administrative overhead and they are cheaper as well okay so this is the reason that the public cloud have uh, i mean become so so popular these days okay most of the companies are using public cloud okay i mean uh, uh, until you have some some really particular requirement related to the data okay, most of the companies are using public cloud these days okay so it is uh, easier to use it is a uh, cheaper and uh, there is less administrative overhead when you use public clouds okay <clears throat> next is private cloud now as i mentioned uh, that uh, there are some companies who prefer to use the private cloud as compared to public cloud so what is a private cloud so uh, there is an option that you can buy your own servers okay set them up then create virtualization and then use them to deploy your applications okay in this case it means that the physical infrastructure or physical servers are owned by you even though you have virtualized them as as public cloud platform does but the servers are under your control completely okay you own them 
So for these type of setups are called private cloud. The disadvantages are that you need to manage each and everything on your own as compared to public clouds where the vendor manages that. So administrative overhead is much more with, with private clouds. Also, it is expensive as you are buying the physical server capacity and you need to hire additional manpower, means employees, to manage it for you. Okay. So to avoid all these headaches, okay, public clouds have become super, super popular platforms for application deployment. Okay. And uh, we have, I mean, we're learning uh, a public cloud platform, AWS here in this playlist. Okay. I hope the things are clear till now. Okay. So let's talk about AWS now. Okay. So as I mentioned, AWS is the most popular public cloud platform these days. Okay. And it is the most widely uh, used a cloud provider. So uh, the market share is, is uh, I mean highest in, in, uh, in terms of customer, then followed by uh, uh, Azure and GCP. Okay, so right now as I speak, <clears throat> okay, so there are over 200 fully featured services available in AWS. So not just the virtual machines, it has other services as well. If, if I give you some examples, like uh, there's a service called uh, Simple Storage Service, which is also called S3 Storage Service in AWS. Then they have some database services as well, like RDS. They have their own container service called ECS or Elastic Container Service. They also have Elastic Kubernetes Service, which is called EKS. Okay, so they have multiple services, okay, 200 plus services uh, that we can use using the pay as you go model okay so that's all about this video i just wanted to give you a very high level overview of what is cloud computing okay uh, uh, what is public cloud uh, uh, what is private cloud and uh, and what is uh, aws in general okay all right so i hope you liked my video if you did please hit that like button share this video with others and subscribe to my channel to support my work. All right, guys, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.